Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well we've got a full width slide show for you today and when you hover over it it's going to pop up with a heading, a bit of content and a call to action button. Really easy to do. And we're doing this today with the free version of Elementor. It'll work both with the free version and the paid version. If you need Elementor you can find it from the link below the video. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a new page. I'm using the free 2020 theme here today. When I'm using Elementor, I like to go down to the template and the page attributes here. If it's not closed, just hit the little chevron and it'll open up for you. And I like to use a full width template. So give your page a name, whatever you want to call it. And we want to edit with Elementor, obviously. So here we go. We've got a page here. And the first thing I'm going to do is drag a little free widget over. And I'm going to use the icon box. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to use that purely because it's got an icon in it. And it'll prompt us over here to edit it. I'm going to click on the icon. Put whatever you want in the filter or just scroll through. There's a little icon I'll use. And if you prefer, you can upload your own. There's the heading. I haven't got anything specific to say, so I'm going to leave that just as it is. I want a bit more content in there than we've got there. So I'm going to go over to lipsum.com and get a bit of dummy content. And I'll pop that in there. That's better. Now I want to break this up a little bit because when we expand this, it's going to go full width. And what I actually want to do is expand it probably after every long sentence. So one there, one there, and one here. Now you can go in here and you can try and put a space in. And it looks like it's doing it over here, but it's not actually doing it over here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue where I actually want it to split. So one there as well. And one right at the bottom. And as you can see, it's not doing anything over here. Well, we can add a little bit of HTML. It's really easy to make it split. We can use a break, which is a left pointy bracket, BR, and a right pointy bracket. And as you can see, that's broken that at that point. Just copy that. And everywhere you want it to break, just pop that in. As you can see, that's broke that down into the little lines there. It's just going to work better without having to use padding to squash this up on the various devices. OK, well, this is getting to where I want it. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into my column, the little dark tab here, and put a bit of a dark background in there that's a bit transparent. So when we put the slideshow in, we can see it, but it'll make our text stand out on top of the actual slides themselves. So I've gone into the column, as you can see up here, it says column. Let's go over to style, background type. I'm going to use a classic, just a little paintbrush there, a little color, left click and pop in the color that you want. I'm going to use black, but like I said, I don't want it fully black like that. I want it halfway see through. So the bottom slider here is opacity. I'm going to take mine down to about 50%, something like that. Great. So now I can go back in and start styling my little widget here. So I'm going to go over to style. Icon itself, I'm going to make that white. Obviously you can make yours whatever colors you want. Spacing, I'll leave that alone. Size, you can take it up and down in size. I think I'll take it up, up a little bit in size there. There we go. I don't want to rotate it. That's a nice little feature if you do. The heading itself, I think I'll leave it that color. That's going to stand out nicely on the background there. Typography, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Something like this. The weight's fine. Transform style. I'm going to use capitalize under transform. That'll put a capital letter on the first of each of the words there. That's great. That'll work for me. And let's move on down. 
and we'll do the description and all I'm going to do there is turn that white so I'm going to click on it click the color it's already open for us there and just slide it up top left hand corners white or obviously any color you want great so that's that first part done now what I want to do is add a call to action button and then we'll start putting some spacing in here so I'm going to go back to the matrix the little dots up here I'm going to grab a button I'm going to drop it right underneath here so it's in the same column so we're using the same overlay there I'm going to pop that button into the middle I want to make it a bit bigger that's fine and obviously put your link in here for your button best practice is if you're linking to your own site leave it as it is if you're linking to somebody else's site or off your own site open it in a new window so your site stays open write whatever you want in the button here okay let's pop over to start and let's give it a background color I'm going to make mine red stands out nicely just going to slide that over to the right hand side pop this all the way up to the right hand side or I should say slide this over to the left hand side funnily enough if you slide it all the way over the right it's going to be pretty much the same color and when we hover over the button let's make it black perhaps so background color there's black bottom left corner right there and you can change the text color and font and everything you want here also if you want to make your button rounded give it a border radius 50 picks makes it sort of pill shape or you can do slight borders by putting sort of 15 in make it slightly rounded like that I'm happy to have mine as it was though so I'm going to delete this and common to most Elementor edits if you delete anything in there it'll just return to the default for you all right well let's leave that as it is for the moment I want to add a bit of padding to the top of here and to the bottom of here so if we go to our advanced tab now that's where we always find the padding I'm going to uncheck the chain because I just want to add some to the bottom if you keep the chain checked like that one up there it'll do all four at once for you and I'm going to add let's say 60 pixels to the bottom that works now let's pop back into our top module here or our top widget little blue tag for the widget and I'm going to do similar but just to the top of this again I'm going to uncheck the chain I think I'll actually put 30 pixels left and right because that'll help on responsive devices or even 20 it probably do so let's go ahead and do that I'll put 20 on right and left and I'll show you why in just a little while okay for well, we've got pretty much everything we want there in our rows we've got our little call to action we've got our heading and we've got our icon right there you can adjust spacing and line height and everything like that if you want to within this module but I'm happy with it just the way it is okay well let's make it full width and let's make it buffer up against the top and the bottom of the section so let's go to the column itself a little dark tab right here make sure there's no padding in there and again we'll find the padding under the advanced tab just put a zero in there I'm leaving that chain link and as you can see it does all four at once that takes any padding that that surrounds that column right there away that's great now we can go into our section the blue tab at the top here and I want my content to be full width so I'm just going to flip this from box to full width as you can see that's now full width but we've got a lot of padding on the top and the bottom and I just don't want that there I want this buffered up against top and bottom like I said so again we'll go over to advanced and find padding and margins and again I'll leave the chain linked I'm just going to put a zero in there bingo there we've got it and this is where we're going to put our slideshow in our actual section here so if we go over to style we'll find background right at the top if it's closed up just hit the little chevron a little triangle there background type you've got classic which is a color or an image you've got gradient you've got video 
and you've got slideshow and I'm going to use a slideshow this time. Just click on the little plus icon to add your slides. And if you hold your control key down, you can select multiple slides. Put in however many you want. You can reorganize them simply by dragging and dropping where you want them here. Put in a caption if you want to. I'm going to leave mine just pretty much like that. When you're happy, hit the insert into gallery button. And as you can see, there it is behind. And the little overlay that we've got going on there is making our text stand out. The overlay that we put in the actual column itself. OK, here's the actual slideshow controls. I want it to infinitely loop, go round and round and round. That's fine. Duration's fine. It's going to change every five seconds. I'm happy for it to fade. You can slide right, slide left, slide up, slide down if you prefer. Transition duration. I'm going to slow that down slightly. I'm going to make mine say 850. That's the time it takes to fade from one to the other. And we're in pretty good shape there. OK. Let's write some custom CSS and make this disappear now until we hover over it. Because I mean, if you want it just like that, save this and you're good to go. Because if we look at it now, it's just a regular slideshow and your heading and your call to action and content are there at all times, which is fine. If that's what you want for your hero section, it's job done. But what I'd like to see is nothing there so they can see the images nicely. Then when they hover over, I want all this to appear. And we've got to write a bit of CSS for this, but don't let that put you off. Any CSS I'll write, I'll put down below as usual. So let's go back in here. I want to go into the actual column itself, the little dark tab. We're in the section at the moment. And in the advanced tab, if it's not open, just hit the little triangle again. I'm going to give it a class. And we'll call it SS Hover, Slideshow Hover. Call yours whatever you want. It has to be unique and it really wants to make sense to you. Now, if you're using Elementor Pro, you can use the custom CSS box down here and write your CSS in here. I'm going to do that today for convenience. But if you're not using Elementor Pro and you're using the free version, you can still do it. Like I said, I'm using the free 2020 theme and most themes that I know of WordPress themes have this. If you go to your dashboard, down to appearance and customize, right at the bottom of the customize box, you'll see an additional CSS box. And you can write your CSS in here. As you can see, I've got a lot of CSS in there already. If it's more convenient for you while you're doing this, you can go to the home page and set whatever page you're working on here. If it's published, you'll make sure it's published as the page and you can do it in real time. But it doesn't matter too much because you can have both of these open at the same time. So you can flip back and forth from a customizer to your page, write your code here, flip to your page, make sure it's working back and forth like that really easy. But for convenience, I'm going to write mine in my CSS box, which, like I say, you won't be able to use unless you've got the pro version. OK, so we gave our column a class of SS hover, I believe. All classes have to have a dot or a period in front of them. So it's dot and the class name SS hover. It sounds like a ship. Open and close some curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets is where we write our CSS code. And what do we want? We don't want to see it at first. So let's hide it with opacity opacity colon zero which is individual invisible as you can see it's disappeared there semicolon and when we hover over it we want it to become fully visible so I'm going to copy all of this from the dot all the way down to the curly bracket there control C I'm going to drop down a little bit Right after the R of hover there with no space, make sure you don't put a space in there or it won't work. Put a colon and the word hover. And what this is doing, it's telling it, telling our column here or anything that's got the class of SS hover, that when we hover over it, we want it to do something, which is the bit of code in here. 
So we want it to bring it back, which is opacity one. So when I hover over now, you can see that pops back in. But it's happening really quickly, and I like it to happen a little more gracefully than that. So we can achieve that with a bit of transition duration. And we put that in the regular state, not the hover state. I'll say transition. As soon as I put that in, it'll prompt us, and there's transition duration right there. I'm going to say 1.2 seconds. Put in whatever you want, 0 0.5 seconds, however you want. Semicolon. Always put a semicolon after your last bit of code, because if you forget to do that, it won't read the next bit. And this particular one, it don't matter because that's the last one, but it's a good practice to get into. So now, that's a lot more gradual. So we should be good to go. Now, what I was telling you earlier about putting a bit of padding left and right, if we look at this, we're on a desktop view. If we look at it on a tablet view, had I not put the padding in left and right there, it would be buffered right up against the sides. And the same for the mobile view. That seems to work fine on both. And if anybody's wondering why mine's disappearing up under my header there, I've got a custom header going on that's sticky, so it stays there all the time. Okay, well, let's see what we've got here. We'll publish. And we'll have a look. So there it is. We've got a little slideshow. It should change every five seconds. Then when we hover over it, it should take 1.2 seconds to bring in our content. And there it is, we've got a nice heading, an icon, and a call to action to take people wherever it is you want to take them. Like I say, really easy to do, a little bit of CSS coding there, but <laughs> nothing too heavy duty, and it will be below this video. You're welcome to use it if you want to. And for those of you that were using the free version of Elementor, you can do all this with that, apart from this little bit right here. And all I would say is, instead of writing it in here because you can't just write it in here and it's a good idea to always give your css a custom header forward slash star star forward slash and you can write your header in between there or any notes you might want to put in because this will not be read as code so we call it slider header or slider hover whatever whatever makes sense to you and it's a courtesy for anybody that may come behind you and edit or if you write a lot of css like i do it just makes things easier to find and you would have written your code in here just like that. And I'll put this code below the video. I'm going to delete it from here because I don't need it in two places. And once you've written it in here, make sure you hit the publish and you're good to go. So I'm going to get rid of that because, like I say, I don't need it in two places. So there you have it, guys. That is how to create a full width slideshow with content and call to action on hover and as you can see when you hover over it, it's got the dark overlay which makes things easier to read on the slides here so i hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our youtube channel once again this has been jamie from system 22 and webdesignertechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day.